Great. Folks, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at tuning forks. And as you know, with the tuning fork, a tuning fork basically a piece of metal, which is going to be in this uh, fork shape. And then when you strike it, it's going to vibrate back and forth, sending out pressure waves, what we call standing waves, those are the longitudinal waves. Now, what's interesting about these, you'll notice that this guy does not have these little clamps on it. Sort of interesting. And when I strike this guy, 256 hertz, C. When I strike this guy, 256 hertz, C. Here's an interesting thing. This guy wants to vibrate at 256. That's its resonant frequency. This one wants to vibrate at 256. So therefore, if I put these guys together very close, not touching, notice there's a small distance that's in between them. They are not touching at all. And I strike this guy like so. Take this off. This guy's not vibrating. It's a resonant frequency. You give it 256, it's gonna resonate 256. It likes that, it's that natural one it likes. Let's take a look at something else. If I take these two tuning forks and I strike this guy, 256, 256, huh, you know what? They're pretty much exactly 256 to each other. But that's why we have the clamps. These little clamps that are here, I can now go and change where it vibrates at. So I'm going to make a change. It's not 256 anymore. It's a little bit different. Let's see. Hear that? Wah, 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 wah. That's called a beep. So what's happening is we're getting constructive and destructive interference. One act is actually 256, the other one's slightly off. Now you might ask, well, how can I tell how far off it is? Well, let's take a listen. I'm gonna make this guy just a little bit less than it was before. Try it there. That's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six. It basically, we're getting that beat, that uh, interference between the two, which is basically about one per second, one hertz. That means that this guy's 256, this guy's gonna be off by one. So it's gonna be either 255 or 257. That one beat hurts. Prediction, what do you think is gonna happen if I make this greater? I'm gonna make this guy a bigger difference. And let's see now what happens. So if it were before, we got one beat per second because it was one off, this is now more than one off. Let's see. There it is. If we count the number per second, get the hertz, we can go and add and subtract to figure out the two potential frequencies that this guy happens to be at. If I go more, wow, we get a bunch. It's sound, ooh, now it starts to sound bad. We get dissonance, which actually starts showing up. That's a whole different ball game which happens to be there. By the way, any of you guitarists out there ever gone and tuned your uh, guitar string? You sit there and go ding, 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 ding. And if you get a warble, wah, 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 mm, it's, not, it's not in tune. You gotta go so they're exactly the same because you're trying to get the same note from the two strings. And so therefore, beats are used in a number of different ways, used for tuning. So that is what we're doing with beats.